Hey guys, it's Anna from Anna Coin Art. Tonight I am going to show you how to do a beautiful project, hopefully beautiful. We're going to be making a charcuterie board. We're going to be decorating it with some resin and some beautiful crushed glass. And we're going to do a rose gold design. I have created some coasters in this same design that we're going to do. And here's what they look like. They've got rose gold and white, crushed glass on them. So pretty shimmery. And I've got this set of two here. And also a wine glass holder, which is handy dandy here. It sits right on the top of your bottle of wine. Beautiful gift idea and you hang your glasses on each side and then comes with the matching coasters and I wanted to do a matching tray with it as well. So since I have not made a YouTube video for a pretty long time, um, I thought I would just hop on live tonight and so make this kind of a little class. So if you're watching this live, awesome. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, the video going away because I think I'll, it'll stay on my channel so you can go back to it later on. If you do end up liking the result and you want to get the supplies and try to make it yourself. Um, and I will, um, I'll also list in the description just the different materials that we used and they're so interchangeable so that you could, you know, if you wanted a different shape of board or different colors, you want to do a different color scheme than the rose gold. I'll kind of show you how to make your own variation of it. But tonight I'll just give you the basics on how to do a charcuterie board. And hopefully we can get something really um, pretty to go along with these coasters. And let's see. So I got this board actually at the store Aldi, and it was really reasonable. I think it was only maybe $15 or $20, and it's a solid acacia. And it's got this logo here, and so this is the part that I'm going to cover up. And that way, it will allow this two-thirds of the board to be used for placing the food or um, the drinks or whatever you would want to present or serve on here. Um, I see that I did not... Oh, I didn't finish taping this well, so here's a, gonna be a little lesson in tape. Let me go grab some. The tape you need to get, which is the best for fluid art, is frog tape. Um, you can get it on Amazon or probably a hardware store. This is the best tape. So, you know, you won't get like those lines, like those painters, um, you'll get like clean, crisp lines. You won't get like when you tear off the tape, it tears off the paint. So this is great. So I'm going to put the resin on this side and I've already taped this part. I don't want to go any further. And I also taped the little hole here and in the back. But on this side, I do want to tape along the edge so that when it drips over the side, it's not going to get on the back. I want the back to stay nice and pretty. So I just stick my tape right along the edge and going around the corner here. Actually, don't have to put it on and cut it. You can just kind of curve it to fit the corner, but just make sure to press it down really hard. And also, I'll try to remember at the end to tell you a fantastic secret trip trick for removing the tape at the end without letting it um, take off your design. So I think I, I think I will end up cutting this. I was kind of wrong about doing the curve. So I have been doing quite a bit of art this summer, but I'm having, um, I'm finding it hard to um, balance doing the art and making the YouTube videos because all of the editing 
it seems really computer intensive to me. Um, and if I had to pick, I would obviously prefer to do the artwork, but I also want to be here on YouTube as well. So hopefully this live video works out well and I can do this once in a while. I've done one live video before, so this is only my second. So I apologize for you know, the lighting or the clarity or the sound is probably not very good, but I am in my garage right now. Um, I've been doing resin out here this summer just to have a nice ventilated area. So let's just talk about resin a little bit. If you're familiar with it, great. If you're not, um, typically artist resin comes in a, a two part um, set and one part is the resin, one is the hardener and you mix them together right before you're gonna use them. And um, it's recommended to have like safety goggles and um, a respirator mask because the fumes can, can be dangerous. Also, if you're sanding the resin, um, you wanna make sure to wear goggles. Uh, so I just wanna say that um, because if you do decide to do this project on your own, just look up some stuff about resin safety. If you haven't already, is um, the, the artist resin kit and follow the for mixing and using it. And I'm using a resin called counterculture resin. And it's just the one that's been working for me lately. Um, here it is right here. Counterculture DIY. Yeah, it's just been working for me pretty well. I like it. I'm using the thin viscosity. Um, I, I like when it's easy to move around. I don't like the super thick kind. And the counterculture resin is food safe. So that's good because we're doing a charcuterie board and you want um, people to be able to put all their food on it to serve. Um, so I'm not doing a very good job of taping this, but I should have done it before the video. So I apologize. But this is going to be good enough for now so we can get to it. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on some gloves and mix up the resin. I hope you guys this summer has been going well. Um, one thing I've been trying to do this summer is to create art more consistently. My personality, and maybe this is a lot of artists, um, like part-time artists, I don't know. Or maybe it's just me. My personality is to do all or nothing with art. Like either I am working on a ton of things, I'm putting in a bunch of hours and doing all sorts of projects, or I am doing nothing. <laughs> and thinking in the back of my mind, like, I wish I was doing art, but I don't really, I can't really, for some reason, like, get over this block. Um, so either like you're in the groove of it or you're out of the groove <laughs> and I, that's okay if you're just, you know, doing it for a hobby or just for art therapy or just for fun or whatever. And that's totally fine. Um, but I really wanted to, I'm preparing for a show coming up in October and I really wanted to build up a body of work and have enough inventory of trays and coasters and things for the show. So I wanted this summer to just be able to create a little bit consistently rather than like a big chunk here or there, which can get a little bit exciting, but stressful. Okay, so I'm taking, um, what's this, part A. 
and I'm going to pour it into this cup. And you want, for this resin, you want equal parts of A and B. And there is a resin calculator out there that's great on artresin.com. But I actually never really measure lately. I just kind of have done it enough that I sort of know how much to pour in, how much I'm going to need. And sometimes if I do mix up a little bit extra, then I just throw it into a couple of coasters. Sorry, my camera. There we go. It's a little bit um, blurry. Okay, I'm going to duck down here because I got to see the, I got to make sure this is level. So I'll be right back. So I'm going to make sure there's equal parts. Oh, crap. I just spilled the cup. Good thing I have, so I have my whole work surface covered with um, plastic trash bag, so nothing's getting on the floor. I'm just in my garage. Um, and I always have a bottle of rubbing alcohol handy for cleanup because this wipes off resin great. Just some plain Jane old isopropyl alcohol. Wipes it up great. Don't have to worry about spills or whatever, even if you, yeah, get it in the wrong place. Just wipe it up while it's still wet and fluid. It's fine. Okay, I'm going to disappear for a minute more while I figure out if what I have over here is level. Let's see. It's not. Yay. Redo, redo this. Probably not the best setup to film, but figuring it out, guys. It's for your patience. So I'm just going to get an equal amount of both. Almost. All right. I call that good. And I like these big craft sticks for mixing. They're just cover more surface area than the little ones. So they mix it faster without having to move faster. Because if you can mix a little bit slower, then you have less air bubbles in the resin. Okay. So I wanted to just brainstorm with you guys and just talk about ways to create art more consistently because that's what I am in quest of this summer. And I think I've been able to do it not to my full potential, but I've been able to improve on it. So um, like in the last two months, um, I have made about four trays or six trays, um, t about 12 sets of coasters. I'll give an example here. Um, here's some, here's some more coasters. Uh, see, they have little words on them. Let's see, it says grace. This one says peace. And here's some really pretty mermaid ones. I love these colors. Let's see. I have a bunch of these. I've got the gold leaf in the middle. 
I've been using alcohol inks in my resin work. You can see that gold kind of splash that's alcohol inks in there. I think that looks really pretty. So I've done about 12 sets of like four coasters and some of these ocean boards. These are really fun. Um, I want to show just a couple more styles of trays that I've done this summer. I did a round charcuterie board. This one turned out really cool. And then I have a lot of these um, wooden trays with the sides. I did a couple of those this summer as well. So that and I have also been working on a big 12 by um, 48 painting for this show coming up. That one's more tedious and time consuming than the fluid art. Um, so I feel like for me, that's quite a bit. And <clears throat> why say for me, it's quite a bit because I have six kids and I homeschool them during the year. And two of them are um, 18 month old twins. So it's pretty busy. <laughs> it's pretty busy. I'll just kind of leave it at that. <laughs> so my only, um, my only time for that I can like create anything sanely is during the twins nap in the late morning, which is for probably one and a half to two hours. And then after everybody's in bed at night. So what I've been trying to do this summer is just kind of have a rule for myself that I'm not, that during their nap, we're going to be home and I'm not scheduling anything else. That is my time to work on art. And I just come out in the garage and the other kids just play and they kind of have come to know that, you know, I'm available the rest of the day you know, to do things with them and stuff. But during this hour and a half or so, this is when mommy is working on artwork and that's just what she's doing. So um, I've been trying to do that almost every day, like every weekday. And then my evenings after the kids go to bed are a little bit more inconsistent because some nights I just don't feel like doing anything, like if, especially if we get to bed kind of late the kids get to bed kind of late and there's a bunch of laundry and dishes and <laughs> debris from the day. Um, so sometimes that evening session falls off, but um, I would say infrequently I get both of them in a day and usually at least I get one. Um, and sometimes it can be a little frustrating, like especially if I just have an hour um, it can be a little frustrating to see how little I can get done in that time frame. Like um, sometimes I might just like clean my area up and um, edge one set of coasters in gold and then that's all I have time for. And so that can be sometimes, you know, I can say like, oh, How's this going to really get me anywhere? Um, I have so many things I want, so many projects I want to do, so many things I want to create. However, those little drops of water in the bucket, like doing them every day, it adds up, maybe not as much as I want, because who can ever do all the things they want to do? But it adds up to be more than... Um, I would have done otherwise, even if I just like cranked out a bunch all in a big session, I think. So 
I am taking it at that. And I'm kind of thinking about uh, the Aesop's fable, slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> because I tend to want to be the rabbit and just like run the whole race really fast all at once and win, you know, <laughs> and, you know, instant gratification. And I'm trying to learn the lesson of slowing down, persevering, thinking long-term, enjoying the process, being okay with my limitations, um, reconciling, you know, hopes and dreams with reality of what, you know, I want this thing, I want to be able to do this, get there, you know, create these things, whatever. Um, I can't do it all at once and I can't do it all now, but what can I do today? And just taking a small little baby step and I am trusting like that turtle in the race, that slow and steady, you know, eventually you just keep on going and you kind of avoid burnout that way too is what um, what I'm experiencing a little bit this summer is it's been it, it's been uh, a good pace slow and steady not getting burned out just enjoying a little bit and you know too like if I you know as an artist like if you go a long time without painting anything you kind of think like oh I don't know if I'm really an artist anymore. Like I might have forgotten how to do everything. And, and then it just seems like such a huge ordeal to get yourself to start again. And I think that's one of the keys to consistency is just showing up to start, not worrying about, am I going to be able to finish this painting or how many, you know, how many things will I have done like before this show? It's just saying, hey, I'm just going to I'm just going to start something today. And usually it snowballs and sometimes it sometimes it doesn't get far at all. But at least I got the habit of starting. I got the habit of starting. Um, and if you haven't read this book by James Clear called Atomic Habits, and you're trying to figure out how to do more art, I would really recommend it because um, I got a lot of useful tools out of that book that really helped me clarify what goes into forming a habit. And I think creating art consistently is all about, you know, willing it is something you want to do, deciding to do it, and then figuring out how to make that happen. The book really helps you to figure out how to make that happen in a very realistic way way. And one of the things is, you know, um, just to start a daily habit, just do, you know, just uh, get in the habit of doing just the beginning of it. So for me, um, for me, a good beginning to a creative session is just um, coming out in the garage, plugging in my earphones, putting on some music or like an audio book. Cause you know, that kind of like occupies part of your brain so that you can just create <laughs> better and freer without anxiety. Just turning that on and that's a good start. You know, if I could just get into the habit of just doing that every day, even if I don't actually create anything, if I just get out in the garage, put on my music and just kind of look at my painting that I'm working on or whatever I'm looking on and just look at it and just maybe think about it, you know, hmm, what does this painting need? Like, what do I, where am I going to go with it next? And, you know, that's enough to start in that habit. But pretty soon I start picking up the paintbrush and the, get the paints out. And I'm like, hmm, I'll just do that little, I'll just do that little part of her hand. Um, and that'll be good. And then, you know, the, the hardest part is starting. And once you're starting, it's so easy just to kind of keep going. And then you think to yourself, like, why didn't I, why didn't I start this months ago when I was just, stressing out about how, you know, I keep putting off this project. <laughs> so, and it, and I think if you do just a little bit every day, as I am doing now, it, um, it keeps you in the mode of creating. So you don't get afraid of doing it. If I take a big break, I almost get afraid of getting back into it. Cause it's like, Oh, um, I don't, you know, that seems like such a big ordeal. I don't think I can do that anymore. And whatever, whatever, yada, yada. <laughs> 
all the excuses that we we have or all the fears. By the way, I have a couple of artist chat videos and I have one on there about fears artists face and also comparing ourselves to others and just some other things about like making more art. And so I'll link that in the description when when I get to it, to yeah, finalizing this video anyway. So I yes, so just kind of sum that up. I think a little bit every day is is easier to sustain than you know this big chunk of art and then nothing at all. Even though I'll take that over nothing. Um, that's a great way to work if you can. But like for me, all I have is a little bit a day or nothing. So <laughs> a little bit a day is what I'm doing and it kind of keeps me in the zone. It's like when I try to declutter my whole house or purge everything, you know, I get through one, I get through the pantry and then it's like, whoo, that was <laughs> enough work for the year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just like such a big project. Whereas if I just do one surface of my house a day, like, you know, one countertop or one like top of a dresser and I just do a little bit each day, pretty soon my whole house gets decluttered, but it felt manageable, you know, because it was just the top of, you know, it was just the top of the dresser. And um, and then the next day it was just still like kind of in the zone. And so I think that's what I'm applying to my artwork right now. And it's and it's helping me. I don't know if I'm doing as much as I as I would or could, but um, but it's working. So we got to keep doing what's working. All right. So this is plenty mixed now. I hope it doesn't flash here on me. It's kind of hot here. So it's all clear. You mix it for it says three minutes. I do five, four or five just to make sure. And I scrape the sides and the bottom really well. I feel this heating up, so I'm afraid this video is not going to go that well. So I'm going to try to hurry. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pour it into let's see I'm gonna do white and rose gold. So this is gonna be the white. I'm pouring in the white right now. I think I want mostly rose gold. I'll do a little bit more of the white. Okay. So there we go. There's gonna be my ratios there. A tiny bit more. Okay. This is what I'm using for white. It is. Marbler's colorant. It's a beautiful shimmery white. I'm going to take a scoop of it. However much, you know, more, my, this is a mica powder, by the way. More mica powder means less translucent, uh, transparent, whatever, more opaque, less mica powder, more see-through. Um, I'm also going to use a little bit of this white pigment. It's kind of almost run out, but it's by Pebeo. Uh, I think it's resin pigment. Squirt it in there just a little bit to make it more opaque, more white. Um, oh dear, I feel this resin getting hot, so I feel like I'm going to have a flash cure here, which would suck. So let me go a little bit faster and see if I can get this poured in time. Um, then I'm going to take for the pink is rose gold. This is by DecoArt. I absolutely love their rose gold craft paint. It's just the most beautiful. It's their metallic. It's so shimmery. I love it. So I'm going to drizzle that in here. And you can get this at Michael's. It's like $3. And then I'm using another mica powder in the color powder. <laughs> and it's like a light dusky pink. And that's going to add just a little bit more effect into my pink color. Keep calling it pink. It's rose gold, but I feel like, you know, it kind of looks pink. Mixing this up. Just mix it up as much as you want. That mica powder sometimes clumps a little bit, so... I want to break up the little clumps. And yes, this is getting super hot on me. Now, I know somebody's going to comment that I should have a mask and stuff on. And I don't care. <laughs> so, it's going to be pretty hard to do a video with all that stuff on. Okay, it's nice and shimmery. Beautiful. Excited to put this on. Mix up the white. 
and that yeah. So while I'm mixing here, I would love to know if anybody um, out there has any great advice for creating art more consistently, making more art, just staying in the game, kind of keeping an even progress rather than the crazy ups and downs. I would love to hear. So if you want to get in touch with me, like on my social media stuff or leave a comment in here, that'd be awesome. I feel like it's kind of an ongoing quest. And also along with that, like obviously my, um, my main vocation is to be a wife and a mother, not, um, to create art professionally. This is like what I do to recharge me for my vocation and to um, make some money on the side. And um, so also just, I think the little bit consistently is really helpful for that too, because it kind of keeps it in its place. Um, like I said, I stay home with my kids. I homeschool them. Um, Artwork has to has to uh, get put in its place. So in in our schedule and everything, it can't take over. And you know, if I'm an all or nothing type of personality, it can tend to um, it can tend to like take over everything. So I think this is also helpful for me, like in my life situation. I'm not doing this full time. I have other responsibilities and obligations that are far more important. Um, so this has to. Uh, find its place in that. All right, so we're all mixed up here. And it's time to pour this on the tray. Oh, I should probably try to point the camera down so you can see me work on this. And let me wipe off my fingers. Guys, can you see it? Will you be able to see it? Uh, hmm. If I scoot this forward, maybe? I think. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Newbie here. I'm an artist. I am not a filmmaker. <laughs> okay. This is where I'm going to be painting. Is it blurry? Is it blurry? I don't know. I can't see it. Um, might be a little blurry. I hope you can see. All right. So, guys, once you have your resin mixed up and you have your colors, you can do as many colors as you want. We are going to then just pour them on a tray. Um, so, I'm going to do a little. Let's see. What do I want on the outside? Oh, I think we'll do the white. I'm just going to do a little curve here. That's pretty. And I made sure this was level. Oh, I lost you. Sorry, guys. Let me tip that back up. Yeah, my bad. Okay. Hope that stays. Ah. I bring this down here. Ooh, that might work better. Okay. That's all right. Could be worse. I'm going to put some pink in there. Ooh. It's kind of transparent. Mm 
I'm gonna do, trying to cover up this logo. So I'm gonna do more white on this side. More there. And I didn't really have a plan for this design too much. I'm just trying to get the colors on there and I'll kind of move them around a little bit. I think the best effects come from when things start mixing. Make sure the sides are covered. I definitely mixed up plenty of resin. Do you guys need some for your project over there? By the way, if you decide to make this project, please um, send me a note, like tag me on Instagram, post it on there, tag me. Um, let me know. I'd love to see it. All right. So I still have plenty extra. I'm going to grab a mold here and pour it in there so I don't um, waste it. Obviously, if you've used resin, it's expensive enough that you do not just <laughs> throw it away. I'm just going to pour it in this mold. Thank goodness everything got on without um, the resin starting to harden. So that's awesome. But we are not done yet. I don't want to leave it just like this. It looks fine, but it's going to look way cooler once we kind of mix things around a little bit. So let's take our stick here and let's, and I'm going to blend it. That'll make such a more, you know, organic kind of line. More interesting, smooth. You can do, honestly, you can do anything. You could have mixed these colors in a cup before you put them on. Could have done like a flip cup or a dirty pour technique. If you're into acrylic pouring. I'm just letting it um, drip off the sides at the bottom. I'll kind of scrape it down here so it doesn't, um, so those drips don't harden. And I will tell you the amazing hack for removing the tape, which you just have to know if you're doing resin stuff, is, so there's two things you can do. You can remove it before it's fully hardened cover up those letters here. So you can remove it when it when the resin's tacky, but not completely cure yet. And that would be depending on the resin you use and the temperature of the room you're working in, different. For my garage here, and in the summertime, it's like 80 degrees out or so. It's probably going to be like in like one to four hours. I'm just taking some of the excess and like running it along. Just adding more lines and interest. I have a lot dripping off. I'm going to add this to my coaster over here. And what I have below my workspace is a completely clean trash bag. So it's not going to get any, um, it's not going to have any dust or dirt or anything on it that will go into the resin. Okay, so we're going to, we've blended it, we've swiped it, but that's not all. Now we're going to make it look cooler with some heat. This coaster is full. 
That was a lot of runoff, this project. I definitely should have measured, not been so overconfident before I did this, but I don't care. It's all good. All right. So now we are going to use some heat to pop bubbles and make very cool cells. I need more paper towels up here. Here we go. One second. Always keep plenty of cleanup supplies nearby you when you are working with resin. Note to self. All right, so if you guys have all the resin on that you want, you're going to either take a heat gun like this. This was maybe 30 bucks or so. It's not too bad. And you're going to turn it on, blast the air bubbles out of the resin. Like to use it too much on the boards because it blows the paint off. So I'm going to use my torch here. This is a little kitchen torch. This is just 12 bucks or so. They don't last that long, but you put butane in them and it's like what you would um, use for a creme brulee. And I'm just going to pop the bubbles with this. Okay, there's a lot of cool cells. It's really pretty. Um, now, we'll torch and air gun it again in a little bit, but let's add on some texture. So we get our pretty um, crushed glass. This I got from Michael's, and I also have a, a pretty white gold from there too that I like, and this one was kind of a, rose gold. And where should I put this, guys? Should I do like a strip of it? Should I put it right at the edge? Hmm. So do it across or like around the side? I wish I would have thought this out a little bit before I did it. Um, but it always goes different than you think anyway. I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do on the edge here because the coasters the matching coasters have it around the edge. And so that might just make it more uniform. And it kind of reminds me of like a margarita, how there's the pretty sugar or salt around the edge, the glass. Ooh, the crushed glass really makes this, really makes it. I want it to be really thick at the edge and then to fade to fade a little bit, I think. And you get like, an, like a gradual little ombre effect. Yeah, this is, oh, this is super pretty. I really like this. Ooh. 
they have at Michael's, you have to look in the, like the, what would it be? The fake plants area, florals, the florals. That's why they have the crushed glass and they have it in all different colors. I think people use it for a vase filler and it works so great for these epoxy projects. It's got a little bit of a shine, shimmer to it, glinting reflectiveness. Okay, this is so pretty, guys. I wonder if I should add it anywhere else, like right at the end, or if I should leave it. Hmm. Maybe I'll do one more, like right here. I'll do one more. Just kind of right across here. I can't because it's the handle part and nobody's going to use it, you know, to put anything on. So I can go crazy with the glitter and the glitz. I do tend to like putting glitter and stuff on my work because I just feel like it's so pretty. Okay, this looks awesome. And do I wanna do anything else to it? There's some clear part in there. I like it, but since I have the wood over here, I don't need to see the wood through the resin there. I am going to try to cover that a little bit more. Oh, starting to thicken up here. So you see how you can just play with this. You could do so many different things. There are a zillion different colorants you can use for resin. You can even use acrylic paint to color it. You can use alcohol inks. You can buy special resin pigments. I would just suggest starting out with something simple until you get the hang of it. And then you can see what you like and get more of that. Just keep building. Okay, so the new stuff I put on, I'm gonna swipe it so it doesn't look too out of place. This is going to be really pretty, I think. Never know till it's dry, but I have high hopes. I'm going to add a little down here too. This is setting up pretty fast. I can feel it. Oh, I never told you guys the second tip for removing tape. So I think I said you can just remove it after the resin's set. It's not going to move, but it's not cured completely yet. So it's just tacky. So that's a good time to remove your tape. Might be anywhere from half hour, hour to four hours later. Just might have to keep checking your project. Okay. The second way is like after, you know, when it's been several hours, say you missed the window of removing it, or it's like the next day, still not completely cured, but it's hard. A great thing to do is take your torch and run it alongside where the tape um, meets the resin and it will soften it. It will heat it up and soften it. And then you're able to peel back the tape way easier. So use your torch or your heat gun and loosens it up like a charm. That works with acrylic pour paintings as well. Okay. This looks so pretty. I'm going to do another effect here. This is something very easy. You take your same isopropyl alcohol, put it in a little dollar squirt bottle here and 
You can spray it on. This adds more texture, pops the air bubbles as well. So I'm just going to spritz it right on. Did it on my coaster too. You can see it separating little cells. So I didn't put any um, crushed glass in the coaster yet, and it's pretty full. So I don't want to put too much because it might overflow, but I think I will put a little bit of sparkle around the edge, just a little bit. Oftentimes with the coasters, I do two layers. The first one is the color, and then the second one is the clear with the crushed glass. But this one is very full already. It will not be getting another layer. And now I see something I should do differently. The glass I'm putting on is sinking a little bit into the resin, and it's not going to show up if it goes down below the surface. So. What I should have done, what I'll do next time is wait a half hour, an hour till this is not, not that long, even like half hour until this is just starting to set up, then add the crushed glass. So it will sit more on the, on the surface. It'll still, um, it'll still adhere, but it won't, it won't be heavy enough to sink. Okay. I'm just drawing in, in here a little bit, making a design. It's like a little rose. I'll bring the camera down and show you closer if I can in a second. Okay, then I'm gonna hit this one again with the heat gun. I'm at a really strange angle with how far my cord can reach. I'm going to have a lot of air bubbles in that one and there's no way out of it because the resin I used is not casting resin. It's not really meant to be that deep. Um, that's why I do the two layers typically. So this is just a little bit too deep for this resin. There's so many air bubbles in it. It's not going to come out with the heat gun. And um, something I found out by mistake is do not use a torch on the silicone molds. You can definitely use a torch for canvas work, a board, but if you use it on your molds, your silicone molds, it just fuses the resin to the mold and becomes absolutely impossible to separate them when you're ready to demold, resulting in a sadly ripped mold. <laughs> and another order on Amazon of new molds. <laughs> Luckily, I only did that once, but still, it was a waste of <laughs> however many dollars that cost. Just tweaking stuff here. Do as much or as little as you like with this. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think I will torch this one last time and show you a closer view of what it looks like. my hands are my gloves are nice and resin free before I touch this camera here uh. 
right, here it comes. There is the coaster. It's going to be pretty, I think. And here is the board. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you liked it, give a thumbs up. Um, and if you do a project like this, good luck. I hope it turns out great. And if, it, if this is your first time working with resin, don't be discouraged if it's tricky because I feel like it's a tricky medium to learn it's just kind of finicky and it's process it takes a little longer than you want it to but once you figure it out then it can be fairly simple so don't give up on it if it's something that you think you really enjoy and would like to do um this can make such a cool little party like hostess piece you know you pull it out and you put your really pretty um food on there or drinks and um you know pair it with this kind of a cool wine glass set and coasters. Um, yes, I am going to actually drink this rosé right now. This is perfect for the color scheme that we did. There we go. Um, check my Instagram for pictures in better light of these coasters and these sets and stuff when they're all cured and dried and finished and the tape is off and stuff. Okay, well, let me just uh, bring you back around here. Oh, kind of hard to figure out. Okay, let's see if you can see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me if you watched any of this um, with my poor filming and lighting and all that stuff. Um, I just love being able to create and it's so fun to be able to share it with you guys. And also, um, I hope this was helpful as far as, you know, maybe learning a fun project you can do and also learning some ideas on how to create more art and be more consistent about it. I encourage you to keep going in your creativity. Um, it can be easy to just get in the habit of consuming, you know, you watch others live their life. But um, no, what, what you really want to do and need to do is get out and live your own life and start creating and start, you know, giving, giving to the world, giving to others, giving to God. And um, it will fill you with more joy than um, all that you could yeah, all that you could receive. So um, I guess that's it for tonight. It's kind of late. I'm sure this video went on way too long, but that's all right. Um, it's better than, better than nothing. So take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. And um, yeah, have a good night. Bye.